Skateboards, and gummy worms. It's like, dude, how much money does a ten-year-old kid have? You know, it's it's, it's crazy. But uh, you know, I think most of the blame isn't on these ten-year-old kids like downloading music. It should be these uh, NBA Harvard-type dudes who have been thirty years in an institution studying marketing. Isn't it that who's the blame here, folks? I think so. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Um. But I think there's a very simple solution to the, the marketing woe, or I'm sorry, the, the music uh, industry woes, by not selling enough music. What we need to do, folks, very simple, we need to market all music like rap music, right? We, can't, we gotta bring the rap battles to pop battles, right? We gotta have the rap battles, we gotta have the beats, you know, and it can't just be rap, because that's what's selling these days. People like that inherent drama, right? So it can't just be Ja Rule and 50 Cent. We need uh, Justin Timberlake and Nick Lachey to battle it out. And I think you guys know uh, what that would be like. <laughs> and if you were my enemy, I would sick you up all Britney. <laughs> And if you get up in my face, I'll have my bodyguard spray you with maize. Right, Nick Lachey, of course. My girl let me go, and now I have to smash you to the floor. You might have a better song, but I got the pecs like King Kong. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, I think, I think battles, those type of rap battles, and bring them up to all the genres. Country, you know, Tim McCraw versus uh, Faith Hill, you know. It, it might cause a divorce, folks, but if it saves the music industry, and it saves these 10 year old kids from harassment, it's got to be worth it, right? But the second part of the music industry solution, folks, the second part of the, the music industry solution is we got to, the, 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 um, Capital Records on them, they have to spend more money on producers. You know, because these superstar uh, singers and so forth don't come up with that signature sound all by themselves. Okay? They, <laughs> they don't. They bring these big uh, guys like Thrall and uh, Dr. Dre to fix it. And I know for a fact, you know, certain, anybody like John Mayer? Okay. Uh, Marilyn Manson? Anybody like those people? Okay, and, and Justin Timberlake, they all had help, and I, I heard about their help, and I, um, I want to tell you what happened in the studio, and it was like this. John, I'll take on John Mayer first. Your body is wonderland. Your body is wonderland. John, that sucks. We're not going to sell music like that. We need to sell a million. You, I don't know what we're going to do, John. Well, I uh, oh. I gotta get going here. That's it. Johnny and singing at the same time. Now hit it again. Your body is the one of us. Your body is the one of us. Your Platinum selling artist, folks. Oh, you guys bought it. You singing, yawning, you guys are eating that shit up. Okay? And that's the truth. And of course, the same producer also worked with uh, Marilyn Manson. And uh, you know, I was—I I heard about it. That's how it went down. 
Sweet dreams are made of these. So who would have thought? Marilyn, it's not enough to be ugly and weird to sell music. Okay? Uh, but great grandpa, get out of here. Great. You guys need to turn it down. And uh, it, it's keep it down. That's it. Grandpa, get out of here. Marilyn, sing like great grandpa. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who would I to be so free? Another platinum song artist, folks. Another platinum. Thank you. And I want to save the best for last, you know, JT, aka Justin Timberlake. He had a lot of success. Okay, a lot of insane fans in here. Yeah, I'm waiting for the acoustic album myself. Um, but of course, JT, you know, he had a big success with his uh, solo project. Big success, but it was like a million. It wasn't 10 million, it wasn't diamond. Okay? He hasn't hit the, the peak of NSYNC yet, they were diamond. So JT, of course, brought on the same producer. And uh, it's like this. If I were to write you a, a love song. No, JT, that's, that is not going to go diamond. Maybe a million. It's not good enough. I don't know what we're going to do about this, JT. Come here, JT. Ooh. Now sing it about again. If I were to write you a love song. So that's how it happened, folks. Some of you might know that, but obviously you guys love a guy that sounds like... Sounds like a guy that got hit in the balls. But uh, I, bought the, I bought the album myself. And so, I don't know, I mean, what's, what's next? I don't know, is it gonna be, you know, a guy singing and sounding like he's puking? I don't know, I mean, shake your ass, shake your ass. I don't know, a Rob Zombie, you taking notes for that? But, uh, so that's the uh, two-part solution, of course, to uh, up the record sales, right? And uh, Capitol Records, whoever you want to write me a check. Uh, Devin Wild. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, but okay, so I just solved a major conundrum for the music industry. But the other day, and I had my own conundrum because I was thinking, you know, why, why do the rock stars, why do the hip hop stars, why do they get to have all the dances, you know? When Michael's got his moonwalk, it's, it's hip, it's hip, and uh, you know, it's that guy uh, Kelly Washington or something on the Bangles, he's got his little squirrel dance, you know? I don't know. I was like, how come comedians don't have a dance? We're just a bunch of nerds or something? Like, we want a fucking dance. So I was like, who has the coolest dance out there? Anybody? Who has the coolest dance? No one. Right? Well, my opinion, folks, is Michael Jackson has the coolest dance out there, okay? Good old Mike. And I was like, how the fuck did Michael Jackson come up with that moonwalk? How did that happen? I was like, there's only, he must, he must have been staring into the heavens or something, you know? I was like, Ooh, I wish upon a star. Ow! I wish upon a star. I wish I had the elephant man's bones. And I wonder what it's like to dance on the moon. Ow! I mean, it had to happen like that. I don't know. How else did it happen? So I figure I'm going to do the same thing. I don't want my comedy dance. I want to be cool. And so the other night, I did the same thing that Michael Jackson must have done. I stared, I stared deep into the heavens, way past the moon, and I found a star. And I was like, I wonder what it must, actually, I wish I had Elvis's bones. And then I went and found that cool ass planet Saturn. You guys know Saturn? It's got a big ring around it and shit. No bad. And it's got, I was checking out the other night, it's got 54 uh, satellites going around it. You know what I mean? So I'm like, what is it like to walk on Saturn? You know, it's got a lot of gravitational pull. And all of a sudden, Eureka, folks. I had the ring, the ring came to me, I felt the gravitational pull. And this is the new Saturn walk, folks. And this is why I'm hot. And this is why I'm hot. You saw first and those, those who aren't laughing, I'm going to be laughing all the way to the bank when Nelly is doing that in the video. <laughs> Paying me the big bucks. Thank you very much, uh, Devin Wilde. Please buy lots of copies of my book, Amazon.com. Thank you.